engineers were constantly aware that the thing we are designing is an electronic circuit. We know that there's resistance and capacitance in our wires and that these things interact in complicated ways when we start connecting components together. If you're designing a complex IC, just thinking of all that math required to solve all those RC equations can make your eyes gloss over a little bit. It's like we did back in engineering school. Please work problems one through seven. Except maybe if that homework assignment had over a couple million problems. <laughs> no. So, doesn't it seem a little weird to you that our layout tools, you know, the ones running on those big computers, usually have no idea that they're designing an electrical circuit? They just go willy-nilly connecting point A to points B and C without a care in the world about the R's and the C's or anything else. And then it's our job to run some other tools to figure out what went wrong. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Apparently, Cadence Design Systems also thought it was weird that electronic design tools are not usually electrically aware. So... They did something about it. My guest today is John Stabenow of Cadence, and we're going to talk about the power of electrically aware design. Yes, finally. Before we get started, remember to click that link. There you can download a free tech packet that includes a blog, data sheet, and video all about Virtuoso. Welcome, John. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Amelia. It's good to be here. So normally when we do layout, someone just throws a schematic over the wall and we start drawing polygons. But you say we're going to talk about electrically aware design. Now, how is that different? What's different now with electrically aware design is that the idea of just throwing a schematic over the wall to a layout designer and saying, please lay this out, with no notion of any kind of electrical information, is going away. In fact, it's kind of impossible to do advanced node design without some understanding of the electrical impacts of layout decisions. Right. So if you see this slide here, what you see in the old view is that you do your circuit design, Amelia, if you're yeah. my circuit designer, and I'm your layout designer, and I would do my work. I'd place down devices, do some routing, and then when I got to a point where I'm LVS clean, I could do an LVS run, layout versus schematic, and then I could feed it back to the extraction engine. Okay. It'd give it back to you, and you could do resimulation. And what you'd learn there is, did I put parasitics into the interconnect, capacitance, resistance, kinds of problems that impact circuit performance? Right. I won't know it while I'm doing it, but it may be causing problems. Sure. Okay? This creates this long loop cycle. Sometimes you can do a rip and repair. It can be 30 to 50% of the time that you spend doing any given layout can be in the rip and repair process. So what EAD, electrically aware design, gives us is the opportunity to do the extraction engine or the extraction piece mm -hmm. in the layout tool real time as I draw. Hmm. So now as a layout designer, I may not be doing simulations. I may not be a circuit designer, but I can understand the impact of layout decisions as I make them on my layout for the circuit designer. I can basically be guided by information the circuit designer normally wouldn't be able to give me and try to prevent that rip and repair problem. Cool. And you can do this without LVS? Yeah, because we operate in the virtuoso environment on a connectivity model that's within our memory model, Yeah, we understand devices that are placed, devices that are not placed, routes that are routed, routes that are not routed. But more than that, we can take that information and tie it back to the circuit designer's schematic and simulation runs. Ah. And what we can do is append, if you will, to that information, mm -hmm. R's and C's, resistors, capacitance, information, back one at a time into that netlist view, incrementally, reentrant, iteratively, if you will. Okay, so you gave me a before and an after picture, John, but what does this tool really do? All right, so let's kind of dig into a little bit. You can see here in the picture that I'm able to share with you as we have our coffee. <laughs> so let's start with first, fundamentally, what is going on? Inside yes. Virtuoso Layout, is an extraction engine. Okay. So think of the one we have from Cadence called QRC, which is our sign-off extraction engine. We now have built into Virtuoso the similar idea within the Virtuoso memory model. So what does this allow you to do? First, as a circuit designer, what you will do is you'll do your simulation in ADE XL. Okay. You'll get your simulation runs, you'll use ideal types of components, maybe you'll use some estimated parasitics, but at some point you'll feed to me, the layout designer, voltages and currents on nets that you expect based on simulation results. So that's that picture where it says data analytics. Okay. 
And what that allows me to do then is as I draw, I can see the impact of my decisions and you see these red boxes. That's where you've given me some information, usually a constraint, Uh that tells me I can't have a capacitor of greater than five picofarads on this net. Okay. So the data analytics allows for a visualization of this electrical information that otherwise I would not have had. Ah, okay. There's other things that we can do. So if you start on these pictures on the left, the capacitors and the resistors. These are visualizations that are really good for the circuit designer during the debug phase. Ah, okay. So when you get your circuit back, your layout back, and you do an extraction run, you know, an extraction resimulation run, what happens is you sometimes have failure. So what EAD allows the circuit designer to do is go in and debug in a much easier way than they've been doing before. Ah, okay. The next box, this R and C constraint matching. This is a really powerful tool. Amelia, what you can do is say to me, look, John, I want you to have these two input pair, this Mm -hmm. differential input pair, match capacitance within a 1% tolerance. Okay. So you'll set that in your schematic side. And what I see on my layout side is that there's this constraint. What EAD does for me is it does the real-time RC extraction. And as I draw, I will get immediate feedback. Am I meeting or not meeting your constraint? Cool. Okay. And it's pretty cool because red is bad. Nice. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) And and maybe red's a great color, but the fact is in this situation, the red box in the data analytics tells me I'm not meeting a constraint. Makes sense. Yeah. So as I draw, I can actually say, well, I'm not done yet. So that's okay. I can keep going. The red's fine. I know it's red. And then you wait until the end. And do I get back to a white box or a green box? Yeah. But this is really good feedback. It's the same way with the electromigration piece. I get currents from your simulation run. And as I'm drawing, in this case, this transistor is being connected to a power rail, I can see with a red tab that I do not have a wide enough metal tab there. Ah, okay. And so normally this step is done much later in the design process. Yeah. And the challenge is, is that when you find an electromigration problem, you actually can have a big rip up and repair problem. This will prevent that from happening as I go. So, John, electrical information is usually something a circuit designer is his domain or her domain, but how can a layout designer use this information? Can they actually use it or is it just a bunch of gobbledygook? Yeah, it's a great question. And a lot of customers ask that and that went into the use model. So for the last two years, EAD has been under development. It was released last year in uh, June of last year, but we had some early partners where this exact question came up. Layout designers are not used to the electrical information. Yeah. They don't see net lists, generally speaking, certainly don't see simulation runs. They don't look at waveforms. So how can we present information that's actionable? Right. And that comes back to this color coding methodology. Again, as a layout designer, red is bad. (laughs) Green is good. Right. And so if I'm getting red boxes in my display or I'm getting these red tabs in my EM runs, I know I have to go in and look at it. It makes sense. Yeah. And so then the last piece is the layout aware resimulation. So this isn't just for the layout designer. The circuit designer, as I'm doing my layout, the circuit designer can take the information you can of the R's and C's on any nets that are routed. Uh-huh. You can stitch that back in incrementally into your simulations and resimulate. Ah, okay. So think about it this way. If you have a block and the block has 20 nets that need to be routed, five of them are critical, five of them are sort of critical, and 10 are really don't care. Okay. So what you do is you ask me to place the devices and route those first five routes, and then I stop. And I give you a chance to go pull the information back from EAD Mm -hmm. and you re-simulate. Yeah. And so let's say after the re-simulation you say, hey, you passed. This is great. Move on. That's great for me. So I can start routing the next five routes. And this incremental nature can happen all day long. Let's say you and I are sitting across like we are right now. Or it could be, let's say I have design teams across the globe. Oh, yeah. So I design in California. I do my layout, say, in India. What I do is I go home. I say to my layout designer, hey, I've got the circuit ready for you. Go ahead and do your layout. Let's say it's a multi-day project, so they do the first day, they go home. When I come into work now, I can do this, take from EAD this information and re-simulate. So I get to see a more incremental approach to the layout. Very cool. So what will I use this for? How does this fit into my overall design flow? Three major flows that we support that are designed around the electrically aware design flow. Okay. First is the simulation-based EM analysis. Generally speaking, you as a circuit designer will use an analog design environment, do your simulations, and it captures currents. On yeah. Its. That information is great information, but until EAD, we hadn't been able to pass that forward. That information now passes forward into the layout environment. The layout designer never really sees it, but what happens is as EAD does the extraction and the EM solver does its work, Mm -hmm. that's where I, as a layout designer, will get this real-time feedback on electromigration issues. Gotcha. So that's the first flow. This is really a layout designer's flow, that first one, because it's a visualization that's in the layout tool, and that's what we think the use model will look like. The next piece is constraint-driven parasitic flow. 
Virtuoso has had the notion of constraints for a long time, since its introduction in 2006. And constraints in this conversation are things like, how should a device be placed next to another device, or mm -hmm. how long should a net be in length? Right. Now we're going to have electrical constraints. Oh, okay. So instead of physical ones, like distance and symmetry, yeah. now you have the notion of, I can say this net should be no more than 10 ohms of resistance, as an example. Uh. Or I want to match these two nets in some way. That electrical constraint information is captured in the schematic by the circuit designer. They then pass it forward to the layout designer. And then as I do my work, I can see, am I or am I not meeting these constraints? Gotcha. Okay. The next and the last one is actually your flow as a circuit designer. Great. So, you know, you think, well, great. The layout designer's got this great tool. They're getting all this information, but what do I get out of it? Yeah. <laughs> well, what you get out of it is the ability to re-simulate incrementally as we go. Oh. You don't have to wait the days or weeks until the layout is complete, LVS done, to find out that I, unfortunately, built some kind of error into it. <laughs> right, yeah. Which I've been known to do as a layout designer. <laughs> Put sensitive nets next to noisy nets, that kind of thing. So as I do my work, you can pull the information back at any point in time you want without disrupting me or making my workflow change, and you can start re-simulations. In nice. fact, yeah, the, the good news is you can be doing this. Let's assume you're really concerned about this very sensitive circuit. Maybe it's a high-speed circuit. You can do this all day long while I'm doing my work, and you'll know basically in real time how is my work looking for you and your electrical needs. That's great. Um, and and wait, I see down here this VDR business. Now, is that a bit off topic here, John? Uh, what's the benefit? Yeah, so this is interesting. We Voltage-dependent rules, VDR, they've been around forever. If you're doing high-voltage devices in 0.35 micron, you have voltage-dependent rules. The challenge has been how do you check voltage-based rules as a layout designer? And usually what people do is they manually input, what do I think the voltage is on this particular net? Mm -hmm. And then an engine after the layout tool, outside of the layout tool, like PBS, will check the voltage-dependent rule. Since we already are going to pass electrical information forward, the currents yeah. for the EM checking, we, can al we also pass voltages forward. So now what happens as a layout designer, I get the benefit of knowing the voltages on any given net. And under the hood in Virtuoso is a tool called DRD, mm -hmm. Design Rule Driven DRC. Okay. And this DRD engine can tell me, am I or am I not meeting voltage-dependent rules, assuming we've coded up the rules in the file. Nice. So it's kind of a nice side benefit that we got out of the flow. Yeah. So this sounds great, John, but what's really under the hood here? All right. Let's talk about some firsts in EDA. Yes. You know, we like to pound our chest about some stuff, but <laughs> uh, we do believe that when it comes to a real-time RC extraction engine, we are the first and only tool on the market that has this today. This real-time RC extraction has to be so fast in how it works is so that when I'm a layout designer and I'm drawing things on the canvas, I don't have any stickiness or lag in my cursor. Right. If I start seeing lag, I will turn it off. Usually layout designers are very fast. They put down polygons, they put down nets so fast that it's hard to even see what they're doing. Yeah. Right? We had to make sure that we met that requirement. So this is how fast the extraction engine is. There's also a need for higher accuracy, and sure. that's where the random walk solver comes into play. So it's a 3D random walk field solver, and a 2.5D, and what it does is provides a high level of accuracy. Now it has a slight lag on the cursor, not an unbearable lag, just you will actually notice that it's running, but the accuracy is much, much higher. And I was going to ask you, what was the accuracy story here? It seems like if you're doing this in real time, you must have some kind of accuracy trade-off. Yeah, we get that question a lot too. We had to answer the question this way. If the accuracy of EAD was far less accurate than what you use in sign-off, yeah. you'll have this really different answer and mm -hmm. you won't use it. Because what good is a real-time extraction of resistance and capacitance if we're 30 or 40% off the final? I right. mean, that, that could be the difference between working and not working. Yeah. So what we work towards is an accuracy level that is plus or minus 10% to 95% of the patterns of the Foundry's sign-off tool. Ah, okay. So let me give you a big Foundry out there uses a 3D solver when they do their models. And that's the benchmark, if you will, that all of the extraction engines have to run against. Yeah. We are plus or minus 10% to that field solver accuracy on 95% of the patterns. And the number of patterns was something like 30 or 40,000 patterns. Okay. So we really approach sign-off quality in real time. Excellent. Okay. Some other things. The first parasitic resimulation flow. We don't know of anybody that's doing partial layout resimulation, so that makes us a first. Nice. The InDesign EM checking. There's a lot of EM checking tools, including from Cadence, that work on design, say, in the virtuoso environment. But the idea that you're doing this on incomplete layout is a first. Yeah. Okay, John. 
Can you recap a little bit for me? I think my head hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I talk a lot. So let's, <laughs> let, let's kind of summarize. Virtuoso Electrically Aware Design, Virtuoso EAD, allows you to analyze, simulate, verify, interconnect decisions in real time. Okay. This is a first. It also gives some new methodologies for circuit designers and layout designers to work with. And it actually improves some communication because a lot of times this throw it over the wall mentality was, look, I can't do anything to influence what the layout designer is going to do anyway. Right. So why don't I just let them do their work and go on and move on to something else? Yeah. Because we do this in a iterative and a reentrant way, this really promotes a communication between the layout designer and the circuit designer that didn't exist before. These are all built directly into the virtual so layout environment. So from a use model perspective, the layout designer really only has to learn a new form and some new colors. Nice. Color yeah. coding. Yeah, there's really nothing else that they have to do. We saw a couple of customer papers. We have had a couple of customer papers presented at CDN Live that talked about 30% productivity improvements for the layout designer. Whoa. 30%? Really? Is yeah, that I a know. real number? Or is that just a PowerPoint? I know it's there, not a hundred X or a thousand X or some <laughs> you know huge number, but the reality is thirty percent for layout time improvement is a big number because layout tends to be the biggest or the longest pull in the tent when it comes yeah, to the design. Yeah, that's hefty. Yeah. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Shoot, John, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, Amelia. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can download a free tech packet that includes a blog, data sheet, and video all about Virtuoso. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the EE Journal YouTube channel or the on-demand section of eejournal.com. <laughs>